Hi folks, I'm attorney Richard Lagarde. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you just found out that you've got to give a deposition. And you're wondering, what's a deposition all about? What kind of questions am I going to be asked? How should I answer them? These are all things that worry witnesses. What I hope to do in this series of videos is to give you some tips on how to be a great witness, how to give a great deposition. So let's get started. Now here's tip number one. Understand the deposition process before you go into it. One of the keys to being a good witness, to being a great witness, is being confident in knowing what you're doing. And you can't be confident if you're worried about what's the deposition? Is a judge going to be there? Who's going to be asking me questions? You've got all these questions in your mind. Get the information firsthand before you go into that deposition. Understand the deposition process. And here's the first thing you do. Ask the attorney who's going to be presenting you as a witness, where's the deposition going to be held? Where do you park? How should you dress? Uh, who's going to be questioning you? Find out the facts. Here's the second tip to being a great witness. And that is you should understand the objectives of the lawyer who's presenting you as a witness and you should understand the objectives of the other attorney. First of all, ask your attorney, are you giving this deposition as a discovery deposition or as a trial deposition? If it's a discovery deposition, it's usually because the other side wants to depose you to get some facts. If it's a trial deposition, it's because this attorney who's presenting you is worried that you won't be available for trial and they want to preserve your testimony for the trial. And, and the objective of the attorney presenting you is very important. In one case, you're simply answering questions of the opposing attorney. And you don't, it's not your turn at bat. It's not your turn to tell the whole story. Rather, it's your turn to simply respond to the questions being asked. Now, if it's a trial deposition, then it truly is your side's turn at bat. It is your obligation to get the story across as a good, credible witness. So understand your lawyer's objectives in presenting you for a deposition. Here's deposition tip number three. If you want to be a great witness, if you want to give a great deposition, tell the truth. I can't emphasize that enough. You've got to tell the truth. Now, I can tell you, first of all, that you're obligated to tell the truth under the law. You're sworn to tell the truth. You're under oath. But a lot of people aren't impressed by that. They're not particularly impressed by the fact that they're sworn to tell the truth and that it's the law. So I'll tell you this. It's the morally right thing to do. Now again, a lot of people really aren't that concerned about what's moral and what's not moral. But let me tell you something that's going to impress you, I think. And that is, from a strategic point of view, telling the truth is the only way that you can be a great witness. Why do I say that? Again, if the attorney on the other side can prove that you've lied or told an untruth in your deposition, then he or she can prove that you're untruthful to the jury. And if you lie or tell an untruth about even a minor detail, then the judge and jury are going to think, you know, if that witness lied about something minor, isn't it more likely than not that they're also lying about something that's important to their case? So remember, tell the truth. I'll give you some practical examples of what I've seen happen over the years. I had a witness once, a client, who when he was a young man had been arrested for stealing a radio out of a car. And when he was asked during his deposition, have you ever been arrested, have you ever been convicted of a crime, he said no. And he said no because he thought his conviction had been expunged, that it was no longer a public record. But it was. It was still in the public record. Now what happened? Because he told an untruth, because he was untruthful in his deposition, that became a big issue in his trial. If this man lies about something like this under oath, isn't it more likely than not that he's lying about something important in his trial? Again, where he's under oath. And here's what lawyers tend to do. You know, Mr. Witness, do you remember giving your deposition under oath three months ago? You were under oath then to tell the truth, and you said X, and now you're under oath to tell the truth, and you're saying Y. Were you telling the truth then, or were you telling the truth now? Were you lying then, or are you lying now? You see, you lose all credibility as a witness. So be very careful. Tell the truth and only the truth and you'll be a great witness. Here's tip number four to giving a great deposition. Listen carefully to the question, pause, and only answer it after you've thought about the question. Now, why do I say that? Well, it's because so many witnesses rush into their answer without really thinking about what they've been asked. So, 
to be a great witness, you've got to do this. You've got to stop and pause before you answer the question. I've heard witnesses just snap answers out one after another immediately after the question was asked and they weren't really closely listening to the question. And they really weren't answering the question that were, was asked. So be a good witness. Be a great witness. Pause. Take your time. Think about what you've been asked and only then should you answer the question. Here's tip number five. Listen carefully to the question and make sure you understand the question before you answer it. Don't jump into an answer if you haven't fully understood what's been asked of you. You can't be a great witness unless you really understand that question fully before you answer it. That leads me to tip number six. If you don't understand the question, don't be afraid to ask the other attorney to repeat or rephrase the question. Now here's why. Lawyers will often think up the question as they're going. And sometimes they'll start a question and then it leads into a convoluted compound question that's hard to understand. Or they might use legal terms that you don't understand as a layman. Stop the lawyer. Just say, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Could you repeat or rephrase it? I guarantee if you do that, if you make sure you understand the question before you answer it, and you make the lawyer repeat or rephrase his question if you don't understand it, if you do that, you'll be a great witness. Here's tip number seven. If you don't know the answer, simply say, I don't know. That's really important because you're only obligated to testify as to what you actually have knowledge of. That is, something you've seen, something you've heard, something you've experienced yourself. You're not obligated to testify about things that you don't know. So if you're asked a question that you don't know the answer to, simply say, I don't know. Don't make excuses as to why you don't know. Just say, I don't know. Here's tip number eight. If you're asked a question and you don't remember the answer, simply say, I don't remember. And don't be embarrassed about it. You're not obligated to remember everything. Don't make excuses for why you don't remember. Just say, I don't remember. Here's tip number nine. Don't confuse I don't know with I don't remember. And here's why. If it's something you never did know, just say, I don't know. If it's something you knew at one time, but you've forgotten, say, I don't remember. Here's the difference. At trial, if the fact or the subject matter is something that's important for your case, you can refresh your recollection. You can look at documents, you can talk to other people and, and refresh your recollection and then remember by the time of trial. If in your deposition you've said, I don't know the answer to that, and then at trial you say, oh, I do know the answer to that, it's this. All of a sudden now you're saying something inconsistent. But if in your deposition you said, I don't remember, and at trial you say, you know what, I do remember now. I went back and looked at my diary, I looked at my calendar, whatever, and now I remember what it is, that's believable. That's, that, that's something a jury will, will believe and, and it's understandable. So be careful. Use, I don't know if it's something you never did know, and I don't remember if it's something you may have once known but you just can't remember. Here's tip 10. The best answers that you can give, in my mind as a lawyer, are yes, no, I don't know, or I don't remember. Good short answers, truthful answers. Don't say I don't know if you do know. Don't say I don't remember if you do remember. But if you can answer a question with yes, no, I don't know, or I don't remember, you're doing great. Well, folks, those are the top 10 tips for giving a great deposition, but I've got many, many more. If you want to see the other tips for giving a great deposition, go to our website, LagardeLaw.com, and check them out. Call me at 866-LAGARDE if you have any questions about how to give a great deposition. I'm Richard Lagarde. I'm board certified in both civil trial and personal injury trial law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. I'm happy to help you if I can.